All right. Well, welcome to our business lunch and learn for November. We have our guest speaker that is going to present today on LinkedIn for branding, Ken Lang, and he's going to tell us all about LinkedIn. And he's going to work a little bit into um, the personal page and how it differs from a company page and how you can use that to build your subject matter expertise, which is awesome because some people are kind of familiar with it, some not. And, and that's what he's going to go into a little bit more so that you can become more educated and hopefully use LinkedIn in order to recruit. Wouldn't it be great if employees just came to you? instead of you working so hard in your recruiting methods. And this is a way to do that. A little bit about Ken. He's the founder of KML Consultants, which offers one-on-one -on -one LinkedIn training and networking best practices for his clients, right? He facilitates an online LinkedIn Live on Tuesday which is awesome by the way, because it's already there and you just go to LinkedIn and you press the play button and it's already there. So you don't have to have a Zoom link or anything else. So that's awesome. Definitely recommend it. He had a wonderful guest speaker yesterday. I'm on all his weekly calls. So a uh, little plug for you there, Ken. <laughs> Definitely recommend it. He has all kinds of guests on all different kinds of subject matter expertise. So definitely check it out and uh, follow him. He volunteers with New Start Career Network. He volunteers with the local college. He is always giving job search advice and telling job seekers how to combat different parts of their struggles during job search. So um, today we're going to learn the other side from Ken. He's gonna talk a little bit about the business side and how we can meet in the middle. So take it away, Ken, it's all yours. Thanks a lot, everyone. First of all, a little bit of a background besides that wonderful introduction that Christine gave me. One of the things a lot of um, business owners do is they use their LinkedIn profile as their business. They don't actually create um, a company page or a different, uh, a different way to, to, um, to get the word out. So what I wanted to do with the presentation today, and I'll be sharing my screen in a sec, is look at LinkedIn two different ways. You have your personal page, you have your abilities there, but you also want to have a company page which puts you in a uh, much different light. So I'm going to be sharing my screen right now. And um, okay. So first of all, when you network, you want to network differently, both as yourself and as your company, because you're going to be building relationships differently, but to a common goal. It may be a job, it may be business, it may be um, getting noticed. So you want to think about it that way. Um, and really networking is really just conversation. I mean, we use the term network, network, network. It's about having conversations and building relationships. So the first part I'm going to talk about is a little bit of a review of everyone's personal LinkedIn page. And everyone has a page or should have a page, whether, you, whether you're a business owner or not, because you have the ability to do a lot of these things here, which I recommend um, you prioritize differently. Not everyone has the same goals in mind, but you want to connect with like-minded individuals. You want to comment on people's posts. Um, schedule follow-ups, a very, very important thing. Once you connect with someone, you want to schedule a follow-up or a call to action. Um, I remember Christian and I, um, she was actually commenting on a post that I was commenting on many, many, I want to say years ago, but it was yeah. a while ago. <laughs> I guess and we're what, getting old, huh? It was right. years ago. And, and what I did is I, I'm pretty sure I reached out to you, Christine, and we just yes. talked about it. And then we continued just having conversations over time. It may not be every day, but we stayed in touch because, and you never know. And, and I go into a relationship with no expectation of anything more than just building a relationship. You know, and, and I think that's the mindset you want to have. I'm also not afraid to ask for advice and help. I don't claim to know everything. If I did, then I wouldn't need to do what I do every day and I could just go on an island or something. But you want to be willing to ask for advice and help. And it's extremely hard for some people to do that. In the, in the, in the work, in the um, environment that a lot of us grew up in, asking for help was considered a sign of weakness. And I don't ever look at it like that. Um, you want to look up the information as, possible, as much as possible, but you also want to be willing to ask others. 
Um, I also suggest creating polls on LinkedIn to get engagement. It's a great way to start. My caveat to that is that there have been so many polls now that have been very nonsensical. And I think that um, you want to have a poll that has a purpose. Mm -hmm. and, and above all, okay. it's important to be empathetic okay. all right. with everything you do um, because people are all in different situations, even though we're getting out of the pandemic. You really don't know what everything that everyone has going on behind the scenes. So, Christine, if there are any questions that come up, definitely you know let me know. Absolutely, um, not yet. Everyone's from, pretty quiet. <laughs> you know, from the from the basics, these are the basics of a profile: um, the, the picture, headline, and about section, jobs with descriptions, skills. I like to highlight the relevant location. So many people I know put a location location down, which is their hometown because that's a default. You want to change your location to a metro area, not just local, because when people do searches, you want to have the, the widest search possible. I mean, I've had some people do United States. Um, you may want to do your relevant location to be the area where you want to build relationships from. You know, just because you're in uh, the northern New Jersey, central New Jersey, maybe you want to build relationships in Philly. And you can always change that. You know, you're not locked into it. And the same with recommendations. What I always like to suggest is you re is recommend, give recommendations first, use it as a follow-up. You know, you haven't you know, checked in with someone. So it's a really great way um, to reconnect. And like, this is my profile. You know exactly who I am, I'm a LinkedIn rock star. Um, I, I have this title here, which, or headline, which is not specific to a job. It's what I do. Um, and I also have the ability here on the, in the New York City metropolitan area. Um, and I have this open to work and providing services. Now, not everyone sees that unless I want them to. But if you're a small business owner, you can put down what services you provide here. And if you're open to work, you can mention what you're looking to do here as well. That's separate from the company page. The about section, which is part of it, I emphasize this and I think a lot of us do. Only the first three lines are gonna be visible to someone looking at your profile. So you wanna make sure that it puts you in the best light. I mean, the rest of the profiles in the about section is definitely gonna be um, searchable, but if they scroll through and they call, call up a bunch of people, if they're not taken by this information here, they're just gonna move on. And it's really about talking about yourself and how you can help or support other people. It's very hard to talk about yourself, um, believe me. Um, it's not something we, we like to do, but once you do that, then you can go crazy and list a lot of this stuff here, which is just all searchable. Um, I would recommend that it's easy to read. There is no one right or wrong way to do it. Um, what I would, I have my email address here, which is a very important thing, because if you're not connected with someone on LinkedIn, this is it there, they're not gonna know how to contact you unless they connect. So give them the ease of an email address. I actually have a link to my calendar there if someone wants to have a meeting with me, all different ways to go about it. And this is just talking about yourself. Um, again, Let me ask you, Ken, um, sure. we have uh, under those consulting specialties, you kind of have, um, I've heard that putting them in order as far as character goes. So the smallest to the largest, I've heard it in alphabetical order. I've heard it in importance order, like the thing that you do the most compared to the least. Like, is there a recommendation or I, your gut feeling? I would say this, it's all searchable. If mm -hmm. you want to get someone's attention, I know people that have it like as a diamond or a pyramid and they, okay. it's very easy to read that way. I've seen people do it. Um, sometimes people actually um, highlight it and they put emojis in there. Um, again, it's, 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 it's how you feel in terms of doing it. Okay. Um, it it's, it's marketing yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. there, there's no, from a search standpoint, it doesn't make a difference, but again, uh, I'm, I'm a, I, I've changed it since then. I do check marks here. Again, it's just, it's, I look at it as my personality. I mean, I'm not really that artistic that way. Um, but again, you know, go for it for sure. So then these are some of the things to consider now. And I mentioned this before, the about section has to be written about how your past experience will support your future either employer or your client. No one is gonna care about what you did 
three or four or five years ago, it's the old what's in it for me. And that's where the title and the heading come in. And also don't assume. If you're looking for business, if you're looking for clients, you're looking for work, how to put that in somewhere, else how is someone gonna know? And I, and I find that's a big misstep. Um, I also like to suggest people try videos and uh, I've done a couple, not that good at it, but it's good practice and it's putting yourself out there. So in terms of personal, and this is all personal, you wanna use past emails as a reminder of who and how to connect. I'm a big believer in having your email signature include links to your LinkedIn profile or your company page, really doesn't matter. I like using something like Calendly to schedule meetings so it can combine with my, my calendar so I don't have to double worry about double booking and triple booking. And there was a post yesterday about someone said, let's all schedule some virtual cup of calls. And a bunch of us commented on the post and we now all of us have four or five virtual cups of coffee scheduled. It was, just, it was a great idea for a post. Um, and I don't know if it's going to lead to business or not, but I want to talk to people and meet people. But now this is me as a company page. This is also me. So this what you were talking about before was your personal? Personal, page. just personal. And now we're talking now, about Now we're going to talk about the company page. Now, okay, so this can, is not necessarily you. It's the no. company and what you offer service-wise. Right. And by the same token, if you work for a company, you may have a company page. If you're a single proprietor or a small business, you have your personal profile, but you also have your company there as an entity. And you should create that page and you'll be engaging as your company in different ways. So how do you do it? Well, first of all, consider why you're going to do it. People connect on LinkedIn, but they follow companies. You don't connect with a company, you follow the company. Think about it from Twitter. Um, you can get analytics from a company page as to how many people are seeing what you're doing. You can't get that yet from a personal page. And you have the ability, like I, when I do my LinkedIn um, events, I do them as my company. It can be broadcast on my page. You can create another event, any event, whether it's on LinkedIn or not, and tie it to your company page as a way for you to get traffic. So this is how followers will see. Right? This is the page. If you do a search on any company out there, you're going to see the logo, hopefully a background image, and some information. But the important thing is how are you going to, this is how you're going to see it if you create the page. You're going to see um, this background here. You can edit all these page, all these sections here. And I'm going to go through what each of these sections mean here because you can actually edit them along the way. So if you have a company page already, and you're not the admin, see who the admin is and maybe see if you can be a co-admin or again, if you're starting a company too, um, another thing to consider. So these are the basics of a company page. You need to have an about section, which is different than a company than your personal. You need to have followers. You need to offer services and LinkedIn will give you the option of what services you offer. If you have a job at your company, you can create it there. Um, content and engagement. So it's not as important to do everything equally, but these are just the basic starting points. So to get started, what you do is underneath this work up here, there's a thing that says create a company page. First thing, work, create company page. Then it will take you to this page where it says create your page. And then you have to decide, are you a small business, medium to large, um, education institution, do you have that option there? So it's going to say, let's go, it's a small business. Then it's going to say, well, what are you going to call the page? What's the name? LinkedIn will assign a URL based on that name. Is Let me website? ask you, Ken, can you do a business page or a company page if you don't have a personal Abs page? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, the, two are, the two are mutually exclusive. Okay. Um, what I like to liken it to is if the company is a certain company and you want to know who, who, who's representing the company, um, that's where you do a personal profile and you can talk a little bit about yourself there. This is, even though the, in some cases the company and the person are the same, it's a different persona. And you would select from here what your industry is, what your size is. If we have time, I'll actually go through the steps online um, to show you what to do. And then the company page um, industry will be added for you. 
So as a company page, people follow me. If you look at the page here, I have followers. I have, I think, 317 something followers. Um, you invite connections to follow you this way. You have to be connected, first of all, you have to have a first connection with someone to follow you. Others can follow your page, but you can't invite them. So it's a little bit of a nuance. So if I have 100 connections or 200 or 500, I can invite all of them to follow my page. But if I'm connected by a first and second and third connection in the thousands, anyone can follow me, but I can't invite them. So I don't know. If that was very confusing. If you have a question, feel free to put it in the chat box. I'll relay that. Um, I just want to make sure because it's a little bit tricky what Ken just explained as far as um, if you're not, you know, kind of a newbie to LinkedIn or using LinkedIn, um, it, it could be a little confusing. Right. And the important thing is your page is your showcase of your business. You, you know, if you have, if you put out press releases, if you put out content from your website, whatever it is, you have that already. Um, you, as a person, you want to talk about yourself and maybe how you lend yourself to the company, but it gives you the ability to do two different types of networking. And um, most people only do one or the other. You know, I, I know a lot of small business owners and people that don't have company pages. And if you have a Facebook business page, this is a different way to, to go about your business. I mean, Facebook is a great resource for pages, but now you can put on a little bit different spin on what you do. Um, Again, every person, every situation is be a little bit different. Um, I just want to make this pretty much a highlight as to what to do. Analytics. You get to see with analytics on your page how many views you have within whatever time frame, how many visitors, and what. And I don't have any clicks on mine, but again, you have the ability to, to change this timeline. It doesn't have to be the last 30 days, the last 15 days, and you can export those. So, so if you have a job, would, is that something that would show up? A like job opening, would that show up? Yeah, it, it, would, it would be, or? yes, it would be under, there would be another thing for job. I don't have oh. a job created, mm -hmm. but if I had a job created, this would be, you know, again, when I select on page views, it will tell me specifically who viewed what day, um, how often, again, um, I, I tend to get a lot of my hits at certain times, but again, I would recommend if you're going to do stuff for the pages, if you're going to do it on a regular basis, do it on the weekend so people can look at it on a Monday or Tuesday, but it's not a right or wrong. And you can even go further, like under analytics, and you alluded to this, you can do updates, followers, competitors, employee advocacy. So if you, want to see, wow. if you want to see what your competitors are doing based on your profile, you can see that. Um, again, this is all knowledge that you want to use because when you create a page, what LinkedIn is going to say is these are similar company pages to you. It's automatically going to populate that based, based on what you share. And you want to look at that because as I'll allude to later on, I, I use the word collaboration, which um, is a very weird word, but it, it definitely makes a lot of sense. So this is also, this is how the activity would look. If you select the activity, any activity I've done is here over time. I can filter it further. Um, I use my LinkedIn page more sparingly than um, others do only because um, I'm focusing it on specific events. Every week when I do my LinkedIn Live, um, I do the events, I do the follow-ups in here. Um, I, I post some content, but again, everyone is different. You wanna have a, a method to do it. My method for the page is, here's my LinkedIn Lives um, and I've, Noticed over time that it does get a lot of traffic because all these LinkedIn events can be um, recorded and looked at. And now for something completely different. I'm going to date myself here, but who remembers Monty Python? Anyone, anyone here remember Monty Python? Okay, I'll take that as a yes. There is a word collaboration. It is not a typo. Collaboration is a mixture of collaboration and competition. It's where businesses competing in the same market collaborate to promote themselves together rather than, rather than um, competing against each other. I'm a LinkedIn trainer. There are dozens of LinkedIn trainers out there. And we're all after the same audience. 
but we all go about it differently. And we decide that we're gonna share our knowledge with each other because it makes all of us better. So as an example, LeBron James and Stephon Curry are basketball players, but they compete against each other and they make each other better players. It's a little bit of a foreign, foreign to some people. Why would you want to, why would you want to work together with your competitors? Well, maybe you have a common problem and you can solve that problem together. Um, once you get to the mindset that you're not in competition totally with someone you can collaborate, it makes things that much easier for sure. So some general networking thoughts to think about. Um, whether you're commenting as an individual or a community or a company, there are certain best practices. And I think those best practices come into play with anything that you do. And I think it's important when you go about using LinkedIn, LinkedIn is not Facebook. Very important to acknowledge that it's not Facebook. There are limits to what you can and can't do there. Um, I think that the most important thing to realize is you can show yourself on LinkedIn. You can be a little bit personal in a business way. I mean, with the pandemic and COVID, we all had different challenges and different things going on. And you can now in the future, I have no doubt that you will be able to uh, continue to have that expression there. But at the same time, this is a business um, platform. And in terms of a business account, uh, and I'm looking at the question here, it doesn't cost you anything to create a business page. If you wanna have a business premium account, there are certain things that you can do with it. Um, but I create a, a company page slash business page, it's free, it doesn't cost anything. Um, I would recommend if you do that also to think about um, leveraging any websites you have or any blogs or anything like that to also go to that um, company page. So um, bear with me a second because my screen is hung up. There we go. So I took some of these slides from Andy Foote, there was 10 connections abuse slides or best practices. Not all of them I feel apply to everyone in this room or everyone here, but when you, you have to think about how you come across when you get a connection request or when you send one. And these are comments that people that I know shared with Andy and I agree with them. You know, sending a connection request without personalizing the message. I wanna know from a frame of reference how you knew me. You know, if you attended this event today, great. If you um, saw something you liked in one of my posts, great. But unfortunately, most people don't take the time. And generally speaking, and it changes all the time, you get some connection requests from people that, that are just sending them out en masse. And they be, they're almost the connect and pitch people. The person that connects with you and then right away, they send you the follow-up, buy this, buy that. And I really don't, um, I don't know how you can really get around that because this is the way that people are taught, except that I just ignore a bunch of connection requests. Um, it's very important also, and you know, Rachel and I, we actually do a thing about um, automation. You get a connection request from someone and they're basically, they know nothing about you. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a LinkedIn trainer and I will get connection requests for insurance or financial or whatever. And it's like, they're just sending it out. It's like throwing spaghetti against the wall, hoping it sticks. So we actually have done presentations on it and we've actually joked about it because it's the only way to be sane about it. And then Megan brings up a good point. People that connect and all they say is, hey, how are you doing today? Okay, great. I mean, right. What does it mean? Um, it's being cordial and respectful, but even so, it's really just, it's a waste of the words. Does anyone have any other questions yet? All right, so my biggest pet peeve, and I alluded to this, is the reason my connection request button, first of all, is follow. And this is the caveat. If your connection button says follow, you can select from the drop down and you can connect with someone but it's making it that much harder. When I had my, connect, my button set to connect, I got connection requests out to the zoo. 
LinkedIn limits the number now. You can only send out 100 a week. Um, still, I, I'm a quality versus quantity person. I don't believe in the numbers. There are people that have thousands upon thousands of, of connections and followers, and that's great. But I have to ask myself, how many of the people in my network am I really going to be able to engage with? And I'd say probably in the hundreds. It may change, but um, some people do it just for vanity. And in terms of vanity, you know, Sue Ellison says, post content and comment because you have, because you have something to say. Now that's the right thing to do. So many people just like a comment. So many people just say, I agree. Someone, or so many people just do it. And that's not engagement. You know, spend some time and really think about, and this goes true whether you're on a company page or a personal page, why are you doing it? Um, some people post comments saying, look how great I am. Um, we're all great. But, but, but again, what's the benefit to you and what you do? And Andy has had this happen to me and I have had to. There's nothing with agreeing to disagree with posts and advice, even on a company page. But think twice about responding back on a post. I've had issues with people. I will just take them offline. I'll message them. Because again, that gets put out to everyone. And there are some topics, politics, COVID, vaccinations, who knows what, you really shouldn't be discussing on this platform. And it's, it, it's not the place. Um, anything you post here, you should be comfortable sharing with anyone. And it's okay. I, I mean, sometimes when I, someone disagrees with me, they have a very relevant point. And I don't take it personally and I don't get defensive about it, but at the same time, um, I want to know a little more about it. You know, I, I, we all butt heads and we all disagree at times, but it's how do you portray yourself? Content theft happens to all of us too. We've all had our posts plagiarized. We've all had our posts. We've all had things shared. I believe that when you, when you share someone else's content, you give, acknowledge them. Acknowledge where you got it from. You know, it's, if you're writing something from, I, I, I get a lot of ideas from other places, but I acknowledge where I got them from. You know, it's, again, it's, you can, we all have different voices. We all write in different ways. I write differently on my company page than I do in, on my personal page. People don't know me as my company in some cases, and other people just know my company. There's going to be a differentiation. Even if you are the same person, it's how you are going to be perceived. So the changes that I alluded to before, LinkedIn Live, which is what Christine had talked about before, is the opportunity that people have to actually broadcast from their platform, from behind their picture, as opposed to a Zoom call like this, which um, we're all on the call and it's being recorded. But you can then at a certain time, and once you get the approval from LinkedIn, you can be on your background like this. So this was Bobby Umar when he did it. Um, at his specific time, his head, his, his head shot behind him, his image changed, and he was broadcasting, sure as I'm talking right now. Um, and then I shared his link. I also shared how to apply to get LinkedIn Live. I recommend that everyone apply. They're going to ask some very general questions, but when you apply, and it depends, it can be as your business or it can be as you, Think before you apply about what are you going to talk about? And the answer is not LinkedIn. I mean, I, I do bring up LinkedIn from time to time, but um, I'm talking with people. I'm having conversations. And sometimes the conversations are networking. Sometimes it's just two people talking. And then on top of that, how often are you going to do them? Be consistent. If you're going to do it once a month, that's great. If you're going to do it once a week, that's great. But don't switch it around. Today is Tuesday. Today, next week's Friday. It's two o'clock, five o'clock. People will not find you. In the beginning, you know, myself included, um, the first couple of times, I only think I had two or three people on there, and that's okay. First of all, people will with a LinkedIn Live, and you need to stream that first of all from a service. I mean, LinkedIn, it has to be a third-party streaming service like Streamyard or something to do that with. The recordings are there. You can take the recordings that are there and much like Christine does with YouTube, you can take them and you can put snippets of them on a YouTube, you can put them as tweets, whatever you want to do. You can also, if you choose, um, when you create the event, you can make an event on LinkedIn Live. 
That's something LinkedIn is starting to roll out now with company pages. The LinkedIn Live will automatically sync up to a company page and then you can find out um, who's attended the event. And when the event's over, you can go to your, your stream and all the people that have commented, I always reply back, thank you for listening as a follow-up. Don't just, you know, thank you much, I appreciate it. Um, it's important to engage. People want to feel invested when they posted some post content, they want to feel invested that you've, you've been heard or you've heard them because otherwise, why would they do it again? So this is actually how mine looked. I mean, with the picture, this was, this is how it looks to me. I actually did this while I was on LinkedIn Live. I went to my profile to see what I looked like. Um, no comment needed, but it's just kind of cool to see that one thing to consider though, is that you have a 30 to 45 second lag. So if you're talking like I'm talking now, it's not gonna show up on your profile right away. So you wanna be cognizant of that if people respond or have questions. It's a tape delay or it's a delay from the third party uh, streaming on platforms. The other thing is something called a cover story. Everyone has the ability behind your picture from a personal page to do a video. So the way it would work is, in, and you have to do this from, a, from your mobile, you would, you would select the, um, the image. There's a actual, a, a mic, there's a microphone there and you would record the video and you can record it, re-record it. It's just another way to let people know about you. So I don't know how many of you are on creator mode or how many people are actually aware of what it is. It's a slightly different way to have your profile view. Um, there are changes into the way it looks. There's there's ways into the, Thank you. Uh, well, I mean, there's different things about it. I think from the standpoint, you have the option to go to change your profile around. It'll add hashtags under your name. It's also for personal, not company. You can move, cer move certain parts of your profile around. I go back and forth about it. Um, I'm, I don't see a true benefit to it, but I do it just to see what happens. Um, if you're just starting out, uh, the focus in, if you have a company page would probably be as much with a company page. There's so many different bells and whistles that are going on with LinkedIn. You really wanna focus on the things that you feel comfortable with. Um, and this is how it works. If you go to creative mode, they're gonna give you the opportunity to pick up the five hashtags, what you want um and then once you turn it on then it goes in the background and these hashtags uh, show up again this these are all things to know about um what i alluded to before is spicing up your linkedin um, pro posts with emojis emojis you can get anywhere i i use emoji.com and the way it works is this in the search bar you can have all these different emojis that you can do um, you do a copy and paste, and the next thing you know, they you add them as content things, just to kind of break up. You can do it with your about section. You can do it with the company page. It's easier to read from a from the standpoint. I would be careful with how many you do, but I would definitely try them out. There was a question in the beginning about how does this affect um, the searchability, and I got to tell you something. In the beginning, I was concerned. The easier something is to read, the easier something is to follow, the better chance you have. Um, I actually wrote a post a couple of days ago that don't worry about content views, don't worry about post views, it's more important to get engagement. I'd rather have a post that has 200 views and has 20, 30, 40 comments, because that's much more important to, to make. Why? Why are why? those, uh, yes, why are those comments because, important? Because first of all, I don't know how LinkedIn quantifies a view. That's the first thing. I, I mean, a view can be someone actually scrolling through in my feed. It could be someone who spends five seconds on my pro on reading it. I don't know. LinkedIn will not tell me. And, and since they won't tell me, I can't get uh, bent out of shape if I only have two or 300 views. Because if those views come out with um, 20 comments and that's a 10% uh, ratio, that's great. I would rather have more comments anyway. I want to have engagement. But you get that by engaging with others too. You know, again, I I want to think that my engagement comes because um, I write great content, but I'm not naive. It, it's only gonna it's, I'm only as good as my last post or the last comment that I made. 
Um, and there was some time, I think I hit a home run. I'm like, no one's seen it. <laughs> you know, uh, you had a guest on um, your LinkedIn Live a couple weeks ago, Joe A. And he Go was Apple awesome. Be yeah, I can't pronounce his last name. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. But for him to explain the difference between comments and articles written and posts and, and all that, there there are different names that LinkedIn uses, but they all have their own importance. So um, that was very refreshing because I was thinking, hey, how come? What's the difference? I don't understand. And he really just spelled it all out. So um, I thank you for having him as a host, but being able for me to understand in plain English. Well, the thing about it is this, there are so many people out there who do a lot of analysis on the, on the posts and the mm -hmm. views and the day of the week to do it and the time to do it. And, I mean, I follow what they say. I, I read it, but I can't get caught up in it because, because if I do that, then I'm a slave to the, um, to yes. the algorithm and I Absolutely. can't do that. I mean, the posts that there are, you have to be genuine to who you are. I mean, you do want to post or comment on a regular basis, but um, I can't say, well, nine o'clock every day is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. What if I, if I missed it at 9.30, I got to yes. do it tomorrow. Yes. And, yeah. and, and it was ironic because the last week when I was on vacation, I did as close to a digital detox as I ever have. <laughs> um, I was probably on LinkedIn a couple of times, but I, I just didn't. I actually put an out of the office on my LinkedIn, which, mm -hmm. which you can do with premium because I didn't want to be bothered. And mm -hmm. I, I recommend that you do digital detoxes. You just kind of take the time away because otherwise you become a slave to all of social media. So again, these are all just reminders here. Um, and this is my contact information. And what I wanted to do is leave a little bit of time open if people had questions or if they wanted me to actually go to LinkedIn itself, because the, the thing about doing a presentation like this, it's sometimes a lot easier to show it as opposed to actually um, just explaining it. So that's my official presentation. I thank you very much for your time and I hope it was helpful. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um, I, I know that, uh, you know, people are busy. They have things to do and places to go and people to see and all that good stuff. But um, we have Ken here. So if you have a question, it would be uh, definitely worth your time to ask the question and get some more information. Anyone? Bueller? It's quiet. <laughs> Christine, you, you and I will talk, Christine. You and I will talk. Um, I, excuse I, I, my presence. Uh, kind of no. deleted and came back and, uh, you know, got to love no. those IT problems. <laughs> no, I, I think the, 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 the takeaway I would give for everyone here is, and, and I, I say this all the time, there's a lot of information here. Take everything I'm saying for what it's worth for how it can benefit you. Because I've been at this for a while and I'm still learning. And I admit that I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. um, and things I may have preached about a year or two years ago, I can't preach about anymore. I mean, it's changed. It changes every single day or week. And LinkedIn's always rolling something out and taking something back. And um, that's why we depend on you, Ken, because <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us what works, what doesn't work, what, what's new well, and new. <laughs> well, the thing about it is this, there are people that, that this is their life, their LinkedIn life. And yes. life is too short to think about it that way because end of the day, when I, I mean, the reason I got into this is I was out of work um, for a couple of years or so. And it was during the financial crisis and all that. And I had to reinvent myself. And I wasn't gonna go back to what I was doing before. And this, it kind of led me down this path. Um, and I always wanted to pay it forward and give back to other people because I didn't want people to go through what I went through, even though it's probably uh, the fault for some of it. I'd rather share the information. If you take nothing else away, you know, listen to what I have to say and enact it when you can. I mean, I, my benefit from this, honestly, is the ability to share it with other people. And that may sound a little bit naive, a little bit like um, whatever, but it's how I feel because I think it's so important to let people know what's out there and let them run with it. I agree with you. I, I absolutely agree. And um, as a LinkedIn, I call myself not, you know, so much a newbie, but definitely not a professional. So I'm picking up little things and in acting, 
but not all at the same time because there's just not enough hours in the day. So no, and, um, little by little. <laughs> and a lot of it is stuff that I find out from other people. Yes. You know, and, and, and that's a big part of it. We are, as a bunch of us, we share what we have because it benefits all of us. Um, because we all have our different ways of doing it. I will work with some people and other people, I'll say right after that, I'm not a good fit for you. Or like, whether it's a resume or something else. And that's the thing, you have to know as a business owner, what you can and can't do. And sometimes the answer is, I'm not the right person, but I can recommend someone to you. And you wanna make sure that people know what you do so that you can be recommended. Because most of the business I get and others is gonna be from referrals and recommendations. I love that uh, saying, the the word I said, are you sure that's spelled right? The competition versus Collab connections oh. versus like kind of melting all of it together. Well, collaboration is a great thing because you share what you share and you talk about your experiences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like there's there's business and there's, there's abilities out there for everyone. And there's nothing wrong with it. We're not enemies. Yes. Or even, we're even frenemies. I mean, really there's, the main thing is it makes everyone better with yes. whatever you do. And it, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it, it's a little bit of a nuance in the way people are taught. Um, but it's you're better to be out in the open. I mean, there are things I pick up from other people that I will use for my benefit and vice versa. And I know that. And it doesn't, doesn't phase me in the least. Absolutely. I think everyone that has a business or is working for a business can take bits and pieces that they're learning from other people People on LinkedIn, I, I don't know about other platforms, but on LinkedIn, people are so, so very willing to share, to share their experiences, to share what works, what doesn't work for their area of the planet, for their area of the country. And maybe you can incorporate bits and pieces. You're not plagiarizing, oh. but you're bank borrowing and stealing, which is wonderful because it makes your business so much stronger. And if any of you ever want to do a presentation for a group, whether it's a chamber of commerce or somewhere else, do it. It's mm -hmm. a great way to get the word out. Everyone yeah. here has something to say. Yes. Um, and I think that's important. I mean, you don't know until you try things out. And I think, you know, we all get caught up in our, our routines. Mm -hmm. I absolutely, I agree with you. No other questions, so. Okay. All right. Right. Well, thank you so much. I will send the uh, information to you so that you can glance through it once again. And mm -hmm. um, Ken, thank you so much for sharing with us today. And again, being patient with my IT problems on this side. <laughs> We've all been there. We will continue to be there, but but it's it's just what we all deal with at times. No worries. We do. We all deal with this, no matter what, whether it's COVID, Zoom, but it doesn't matter. There's always some Absolutely. kind of thing, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you again. And okay. have a wonderful day, everyone. We'll talk soon. Yes. Take care. All right. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.